Hello students, this video is being recorded in the summer of 2020, right after the end of the spring semester and in the midst of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Since we do not yet know for sure what format our classes will take in the fall, and since there's some likelihood that at least some of us, both students and faculty, will have to be away from campus for a time should the mitigation plans prove ineffective or should compliance with or enforcement of public health guidelines prove impossible, I am preparing a video version of each of my lectures for the class to have it ready if and when it is needed. It's also the case that necessary distancing requirements in the classrooms may make it impossible that the entire class can be in the same room at the same time. In that case, those whose turn it is to stay away from campus may find these video lectures a better option than relying on a live classroom feed via Zoom or some other technology. So if you're watching this video, it means that we are, for reasons of public and personal health, still unable to meet together in a traditional face-to-face -face classroom format. All the same, I'll continue to do my best to teach you what I know with whatever tools I have at my disposal. Enjoy the lecture. So now we'll continue on with our discussion of deductive reasoning. And today we'll look at logical relations. So when we talk about logical relations, we're talking about the ways in which two statements can relate to each other logically. We've already talked about logical equivalence, and logical equivalence is one of the logical relations that we want to know about. Logical equivalence occurs when two statements express the same logical relationship between the categories represented by the terms. So we say those are logically equivalent statements, and you have a lot of practice with this from the most recent homework assignment of translating uh, into logical equivalent statements a given two-term statement. And so each one of those uh, logically equivalent statements expresses the same logical relationship between the categories represented by the terms in the statement, the subject term and the predicate term. But any two statements that express that same logical relationship we would call logically equivalent statements. But there are other logical relations that we want to learn. First is implication, then incompatibility, contradictory statements, contrary statements, and statements that are subcontrary. So we will examine these with examples one at a time. First, implication. So implication occurs when you know one statement must be true because the other statement is true. So in other words, the latter statement is implied or the truth of the latter statement is implied by the truth of the former statement. So implication is the logical necessity that one statement is true because another statement is true. So here's some examples. Ellen is Laura's mother. Therefore, that is by implication, Laura is Ellen's daughter. If the statement is true that Ellen is Laura's mother, then the statement Laura is Ellen's daughter must also be true. That is, the truth of the second statement is implied by the truth of the first statement. Here's another example. He bought the beer in Durham. Therefore, that is by implication, the beer was sold in Durham because we know there is a relationship between buying and selling. You cannot buy unless someone also sells. So if the beer is bought in Durham, it is implied that the beer was sold in Durham. So if the first statement is true, the second must also be true. Here's a third example. All Irish musicians enjoy Guinness. Therefore, by implication, some Irish musicians enjoy Guinness. 
And here you'll see something that we can reflect on with um, relationships between statements in standard logical form. We have in the first statement, essentially a universal affirmative statement. And in the second statement, a particular affirmative statement. But these statements have the same subject and predicate term. And so that what that reveals is that when you have a universal statement, a universal affirmative statement with a subject and predicate term, then the particular affirmative statement with the same subject and predicate term will always also be true by implication. So if it is true that all Irish musicians enjoy Guinness, then it must also be true that some Irish musicians enjoy Guinness. And we'll talk more about this later when we look at what is called the table of opposition, just a way of thinking about and remembering when what the relationship is between sets or pairs of two term statements with the same subject and predicate term. So that's logical implication. Then we can talk about incompatible statements. And we're going to talk about two types of incompatible statements, contradictories and contraries. Um, but here we'll talk generally about incompatible statements. Incompatible statements are statements that cannot be true at the same time. So if one is true, then we know the other one must be false. Why? Because they can't be true at the same time because they're incompatible. So here are some examples. He is 38 years old. He is 42 years old. If we're talking about the same person, these statements cannot be true at the same time. If a person is 38, he cannot also be 42. Or if he's 42, he cannot also be 38. The two statements cannot be true at the same time if we're talking about the same person. And so they are incompatible statements. Here's another example. Neil Armstrong was the first human to step on the moon. Buzz Aldrin was the first human to step on the moon. Well, in this case, obviously, both these statements cannot be true at the same time. If one is true, the other one must be false, because two people cannot be the first person to step on the moon. And in this case, we know, in fact, it was Neil Armstrong. Buzz Aldrin was the second human. But we know if it's true that Neil Armstrong was the first human to step on the moon, then it cannot be true that Buzz Aldrin was the first human to step on the moon. You can't have two firsts, and so the statements are incompatible. They cannot be true at the same time. Here's another example. The flag of Canada is red and white. The flag of Canada is not red and white. So again, if the first statement is true, the second one must be false. And if the second one is true, the first statement must be false. The statements are incompatible. They cannot be true at the same time. Here's a final example. Michael Jackson is dead. Michael Jackson is alive. So if we're talking about the famous singer, uh, Michael Jackson is dead. We know that statement is true. It cannot be true that Michael Jackson is alive. A person can't be dead and alive at the same time. So the statements are incompatible. If we're talking about the communication lecturer, we know the first statement is false and the second statement is true, but they're still incompatible. You cannot be both dead and alive at the same time. So a particular species of incompatible statements are what we call contradictory statements. And we recognize contradictory statements because they are statements that are incompatible, that is, they cannot be true at the same time, and they also have incompatible denials. So the idea of denial is what makes a statement untrue, what kind of a statement makes another statement untrue. 
If I say I'm a professor at the University of New Hampshire, what will make that statement untrue? It would have to be I'm not a professor at the University of New Hampshire. So that would be a denial of the statement. So contradictories are statements that are incompatible and indeed their denials are also incompatible. The statements cannot be true at the same time and their denials cannot be true at the same time. This will be clearer, I think, when we look at some examples. Ted Williams was the last major league player to hit 400. Ted Williams was not the last major league player to hit 400. So in this case, these two statements are obviously incompatible. That is, they cannot be true at the same time. But it's also true that their denials are incompatible because what is the denial of the first statement up here, right? The denial of the first statement, as it turns out, is the second statement. And what's the denial of the second statement? It is the first statement. So not only are the statements themselves incompatible, but their denials are also incompatible. And so we call those contradictory statements. There's Teddy Ball Game. Here's another example. She is wearing the team jersey. She is not wearing the team jersey. In this case, again, the statements cannot be true at the same time, but their denials are also incompatible. The denial of the first statement is she is not wearing the team jersey. The denial of the second statement is she is wearing the team jersey. And so the denials are also incompatible. That is, neither the statements nor their denials can be true at the same time. So we call those contradictory statements. Here's a couple more examples. All Canadians are hockey lovers. Some Canadians are not hockey lovers. Now notice in this case, we have two term statements with the same subject and predicate term. In the first instance, we have a universal affirmative. And in the second statement, we have a particular negative. Now, what's the denial of a universal affirmative? It is not, as perhaps you might initially think, it is not the universal negative. That is, what does it take to make a universal affirmative untrue? It takes only one Canadian who is not a hockey lover. So, in other words, to make a universal affirmative untrue, that is to deny a universal affirmative, you need only a particular negative. You need to find at least one Canadian, some, at least one, who are not hockey lovers. And that um, denies the first statement, the universal affirmative. It makes that universal affirmative untrue. It is, in effect, uh, an example that proves that the claim, the universal claim, is untrue. So the particular negative denies the universal affirmative. But at the same time, we could ask, what denies the particular negative? What would make a particular negative untrue would be a universal affirmative. So if I say some Canadians are not hockey lovers, you could prove that untrue by proving that all Canadians are hockey lovers. It wouldn't be proven untrue by a particular affirmative because the particular affirmative could be true even if its particular negative is true. So what makes the particular negative untrue is the universal affirmative. So these are contradictory statements because not only is it the case that the two statements are incompatible, but it's also true that their denials are incompatible. Both the statements and the denials cannot be true at the same time. Here's another one. No authors are attending the event. Universal negative. Some authors are attending the event. Particular affirmative. So again, the same principle applies. 
what makes the universal negative untrue is a particular affirmative. So the particular affirmative is the denial of the universal negative. And again, the universal negative would be the denial of the particular affirmative. So if we take these two statements together, they're obviously incompatible. It cannot be true that no authors are attending the event if it's true that some authors are attending the event. And it cannot be true that some authors are attending the event if no authors are attending the event. So those statements are incompatible, but the statements are also denials of each other too. So the denials are also incompatible and we would call these then contradictory statements. And then we have contrary statements. So contrary statements are a variety or species of incompatible statements. And contraries are incompatible, but the denials could be true at the same time. So contraries are incompatible statements, but their denials are not incompatible. The statements cannot be both true at the same time, but the denials could both be true at the same time. Here's some examples. Ted Williams was the last major league player to win the Triple Crown. Mickey Mantle was the last player, uh, major league player to win the Triple Crown. You look at these two statements, you recognize their incompatibility, that is, the statements cannot both be true, but the denials can be true. What is the denial of the first statement? The statement is Ted Williams was the last major league player to win the Triple Crown. The denial would be Ted Williams was not the last major league player to win the Triple Crown. And then we take the second statement, Mickey Mantle was the last major league player to win the Triple Crown. What's the denial of that statement? It would be Mickey Mantle was not the last major league player to win the Triple Crown. And so as we proceed, we obviously recognize that the statements can't be true at the same time, but their denials can be true at the same time. Ted Williams was not the last Triple Crown winner. Mickey Mantle was not the last Triple Crown winner. And these two statements can both be true at the same time. These are the denials but the denials can be true at the same time. And in fact, we know in 1967, Carl Yastrzemski of the Boston Red Sox won the Triple Crown. So he came after Ted Williams and after Mickey Mantle, but we even have to say Carl Yastrzemski was not the last major league player to win the Triple Crown. That was Miguel Cabrera of the Detroit Tigers in 2012. So here's some more examples of contraries. She is wearing the Manchester United jersey. She is wearing the Bayern Munich jersey. She is wearing the AC Milan jersey, right? So all of these statements, obviously players don't wear three jerseys at the same time. So all of these statements, the statements cannot be true at the same time but their denials can be true at the same time. So these are what we call contrary statements. So as we continue on, right, we could say she is not wearing the Manchester United jersey. She's not wearing Bayern Munich jersey. She's not wearing AC Milan. She is wearing the Cork GAA, that's Gaelic Athletic Association jersey, right? So Look at these statements, which are the denials of the statements on the previous slide, right? And all of these denials can be true at the same time. She's not wearing the Manchester jersey. She's not wearing the Bayern jersey. She's not wearing the Milan jersey because she is wearing the Cork jersey, right? So the statements can't be true. That is, the original statements are incompatible, but the denials are not incompatible and that's what makes them contrary statements. Here's another example. All communication majors are good job prospects. Some communication majors are not good job prospects. Or we could say no communication majors are good job prospects. Some communication majors are good job prospects. 
So in this case, if we take the two uh, statements printed in black here, all communication majors are good job prospects and no communication majors are good job prospects. Those two statements are incompatible. It cannot be true that all communication majors are good job prospects and no communication majors are good job prospects at the same time. But again, go back to that principle that we identified earlier. What makes the denial of a universal? It is the particular of the opposite quality. So what denies the universal affirmative in the first statement is the particular negative, some communication majors are not good job prospects. And what makes the denial of the universal negative, it's the particular affirmative with the same subject and predicate terms. And so then when you look at the denials, the two statements that deny the universals, we end up with the particular negative and the particular affirmative. And in that case, those two statements can be true at the same time. It is true that some communication majors are not good job prospects, and it is also true that some communication majors are good job prospects. So the original statements, the statements in black here, are incompatible. They cannot be true at the same time, but their denials are not incompatible. They can be true at the same time. And that's what makes contrary statements. And then finally, we talk about subcontrary statements. And subcontrary statements can be true at the same time, but their denials cannot be true at the same time. So subcontraries, the original statements, are not incompatible, but their denials are incompatible. So here's some examples. Some trees are evergreen. So if we take that as an original statement, what's the denial of the particular affirmative? Would have to be the universal negative. No trees are evergreen. And we take another particular, this case the particular negative, some trees are not evergreen. And the denial of that statement would have to be the universal affirmative, all trees are evergreen. So in this case, if we take our original statements, which are the particulars here, we take the statement some trees are evergreen and some trees are not evergreen, obviously those statements are not incompatible. That is, those two particulars can be true at the same time. You can have both evergreen trees and non-evergreen trees. So some trees are evergreen and some trees are not evergreen, and those statements can be true at the same time. But if you take the denials, if you say no trees are evergreen, or if you take the denial of the particular negative, all trees are evergreen, the denials are incompatible. It cannot be true that no trees are evergreen if it is true that all trees are evergreen. And likewise, it cannot be true that all trees are evergreen if it is true that no trees are evergreen. So in this case of subcontraries, the original statements are not incompatible. That is, they may be true at the same time, but the denials are incompatible. They cannot be true at the same time. Here's another example. She does not live in Des Moines. And the denial of that would be she lives in Des Moines. Or she does not live in Omaha. And the denial of that would be she lives in Omaha. But what if she lives in Madison, Wisconsin? Then we know that the first statement can be true. She does not live in Des Moines. And the second statement can be true. She does not live in Omaha. So those two statements are not incompatible. But the denial, she lives in Des Moines, and the denial, she lives in Omaha, are incompatible. You can't live in two places at once. So um, in the original statements, we have statements that can be true at the same time. That is, they're not incompatible. They're subcontraries but the denials are incompatible.
they cannot be true at the same time. Now this is what we mentioned earlier. This is what we call the table of opposition. And you can kind of redraw this in your notebook. You might find it helpful, but it is a kind of reminder about the relationship that would obtain or exist between different kinds of two-term statements when you are using the same subject and predicate term. So this table of opposition does not work, for instance, uh, on cases like the example we just had, where we had different cities, Des Moines, Madison, um, Omaha, because we're not talking about the same subject and predicate term. But when you have the same subject and predicate term and you're trying to figure out what the relationship is, the logical relation between two statements of different types, different two-term two statement types, this table of opposition can help you. So again, with the same subject and predicate term, if you have a universal affirmative and a particular affirmative with the same subject and predicate term, you will know that the truth of the universal affirmative implies the truth of the particular affirmative. So you see, for instance, in the left margin here, the arrow is pointing down because that relationship works only in that direction, from the universal to the particular. If the universal is true, the particular must also be true by implication. And the same is true on the far right margin. If the universal negative is true, the particular negative with the same subject and predicate term must also be true. And then if you look at a universal affirmative and a universal negative with the same subject and predicate term, obviously those statements would be incompatible, but their denials as particulars would not be incompatible, and so they would be contrary statements. So we look across the top margin of the chart here, universal affirmative and universal negative with the same subject and predicate term would be contrary statements. And then we take the universals, whether universal affirmative or universal negative, and the opposite quality of the particular. So if you start with the universal affirmative in the upper left corner, and you compare that and ask, what is the logical relationship with the particular negative when using the same subject and predicate term? The answer is they would be contradictory statements. So the statements themselves are incompatible and their denials are also incompatible because the denial of the universal affirmative is indeed the particular negative and the denial of the particular negative is the universal affirmative. And it works the same way with the opposite corners. So the universal negative and the particular affirmative with the same subject and predicate terms make contradictory statements. And then finally, on the bottom margin of the chart, you see the relationship between particulars of different qualities, particular affirmative and particular negative with the same subject and predicate term. And there is where we have our subcontrary statements. So again, this table of opposition only works when you have the same subject and predicate term. So if we look at that uh, particular affirmative, particular negative um, relation, we know that they would be subcontraries. The statements could be true at the same time, but their denials, which are the universals of the opposite quality, would be incompatible, right? So this chart you can uh, reconstruct, recreate in your notebook, kind of memorize it, and it will help you on the quiz when you get logical relation questions and those statements have the same subject and predicate term. Uh, you may get some uh, logical relation questions which don't use the same subject and predicate term, and you'll have to think about um, analyzing the uh, pair of statements in a different way. But this will help you in those cases where you have the same terms. So if you have any questions on any of the types of logical relations or on anything else in this presentation, 
please post them to the discussion board. Your next homework exercise will be to examine a series of pairs of statements and to determine what is the logical relationship between those pairs of statements. And so that could be going all the way back to include logical equivalence. It could be equivalence, implication, contradictory, contrary, or subcontrary. And those will be the available answers on that next homework assignment.